All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another post game here on Rangers Central. The Rangers win three to two in a shootout over the New York Islanders. Definitely a chaotic game. You had a cardiac Rangers affair, which, by the way, link in the description if you want to get a cardiac Rangers shirt because of the fact that playoff time is uh, approaching here. And what better time to have the shirt than right now, especially after a cardiac affair from the Rangers was not easy, was not pretty. They get the two points, though, and now they put themselves in a spot where they control their own destiny. You beat Ottawa next week or on Tuesday, I guess it is, or Monday. No, Monday, yeah. You beat them on Monday, and you win the division. It's all in your hands now, and they need to win this game for that sake. I want them to curb stomp this Islanders team because of the fact that they might match up in the playoffs, and if you want to have the momentum rolling into a series, you got to win the game, and... They got the win, but it's definitely not the curb stomping that I would have liked. I would have liked for the Rangers to come out with vengeance, which they did have a very solid first period. I'm not going to take that away from them. Definitely a lot of ugly, though. Igor Shosturkin carried this team, willed this team to win this game. Like, there is no way around it. And Artemi Panarin continues to show why he why I want him to get MVP chance, even if he's not going to win it, because he's come, he's came up clutch time and time again for this team. And now the Rangers set a franchise record for 54 wins here in a regular season, which is also just crazy, but yeah, uh, big two points, big two points for the Rangers. We're going to talk about it. Leave a like here on your way in subscribe. If you guys are new, especially if you're, Ranger fans and turn on your notifications so you know I upload or go live on the channel. So I don't know how to feel right now. I really don't because they played such a good first period and I was actually so happy and impressed with the way they started off this game because I'm like, when are we going to see them match the intensity? Because that's what we've been hearing. They haven't been able to match the intensity of the past few games. That's what they've been saying to us. And they start off on fire, and the Meek is a bad Jack quote in particular pissed me off because it was really him talking about that. He was he had a really good first period. Like he was arguably the best player for the Rangers. That was not Igor Shostakin throughout the majority of this game, and he was out for vengeance. So I'm glad he backed up what he said, but he had a chance early, didn't go in. But the Rangers in general just kept getting chance after chance, and then about halfway through the period, the Islanders started to get chances. Then it was just a mountain of penalties, and the Rangers, for some reason today, just looked better shorthanded than at 5v5. Don't understand why that is, but the first period, they had a lot of quality chances, just couldn't score 5v5 yet again, and they allowed a lot of quality chances the other way because they took their foot off the gas after the first like 10, 12 minutes of the period, and then they invited the Islanders to start playing their game. Second period, the Islanders opened up with a power play because Kako had a dumb penalty in the offensive zone to end the period. And the Rangers just in general kept taking penalties. You had a lingering go off for a boarding penalty. And that made it five on three a bit. Igor comes up with a big stop there. The Islanders would score last minute on the power play, but, uh, or no, first you had the shorthanded goal. Sorry, I forgot about that. You had the shorthanded goal first. I don't know why I mixed up what happened first, but you had the shorthanded goal first. Rangers got a rush because, again, shorthanded, they were doing great. And Mika Zibanejad brought it out of the zone. The Kreider, back to Mika, back to Kreider, over to Schneider, got denied, and then the rebound scored. Would have liked the Rangers to capitalize on those rebound chances because Sorokin left a lot of rebound chances out for the Rangers to score, and they just didn't do a good job capitalizing on that all game long, but then you had Fox fall in the neutral zone after, and then it allowed Engvall to get a goal on the glove side. There it was not a pretty goal for Igor to let up, even though he had a good game, but they challenged it. It was offsides, no goal. So that helped out the Rangers. And that was a risky challenge too. I'm glad Laviolette did it. And I'm glad they saw it because obviously the Rangers lose this game. And it was a risky challenge though, because if they lost that going shorthanded again, after being shorthanded pretty much the entire period, not wouldn't have been pretty, but again, maybe it would have been better because this team looks better shorthanded for some reason than at 5v5. And then at the end of the period, I mean, the Islanders just score like VC. I don't know what he's doing. You got to get the puck out of out of your damn zone there. And then Lindgren was out of position. Nelson had a chance and Igor put it in his own net with his stick there. And that made it one to one would be two to one, not too late uh, or not too long after is late in the period. 
Both defensemen go behind the net. Miller got held there. There should have been a call. Fashing gets the puck, and then Nelson's left wide open. Wenberg's just standing there puck watching. That goes in, and the lack of help from the forwards in general on the back check was not ideal. I thought Lindgren and Fox had a really rough game in general as a deep pair. I did not like the way they played at all. They looked, they did not look good at all. I like the Miller-Schneider pair the most, though. Hopefully, they continue to keep that together because there's no reason not to. And I know they had a couple of lapses here and there, but that was the best pair for the Rangers today. Gustafson and Truba did not have a good game either in terms of the way they played as a pair, which I do not like that as a pair because of the way that both of them just suck at moving the puck efficiently up the ice. And you have a guy in the press box that could do it. I just don't understand how they rationalize putting Gustafson out there over Zach Jones, who could actually move the puck. That would solve a lot of problems. And the team both offensively and defensively looked better with Zach Jones in the lineup. And oh, funny enough, everybody's tweeting after that first period that the last time they scored at 5v5, well, I tweeted out the last time they scored at 5v5, OJ Simpson was alive. And then you had tweets also about how Zach Jones was out there. You had the demonic podcast girl who still didn't cut up her merch yet. An eclipse, all this garbage rolling into the third. And it felt like they just weren't going to score quite frankly, to begin the third period. Like they had a couple of decent chances, but way too much from the perimeter. And then anytime they did get a rebound or anytime there was guys ready for a rebound chance, Sorokin swallowed the puck up, pause, so they couldn't end up scoring. But then later on, off of a draw, our Tammy Panarin would snipe it to tie the game up at two. Huge goal there, much needed goal there. And then that ends up leading to where we go to overtime, which... We wouldn't get there before Igor made a huge stop on Tzizekas right in the damn slot because he got tested so much. He made a lot of big saves, and he had a huge save before at one point, too. Also forgot to mention, you had Pelik who got a penalty shot, which why is Panarin hooking him there? But Igor came up with the stop there. That gave them a bit of momentum as well before they scored that goal. But you had the one where he stretched out on Fashing, too. Igor just made big saves all day long and he had that monster glove save in overtime on Matt Barzell and then in a shootout in the shootout you knew he didn't he didn't want the Rangers to lose this game he was not letting the Rangers lose this game he was on a mission and Panarin and Trocek got the goals surprise Trocek actually scored in the shootout but yeah the Rangers end up grabbing the two points now you control your destiny here if you want to win the division Definitely a lot that needs to be cleaned up in terms of defensive play, though. There's no way around it. The way they moved the puck up the ice was not great. It was just not great. I thought Mika had a solid game, like I mentioned before, though. I really did like Mika's game. Um, I did like... I like Trocek's game. I like Panarin's game. But Lafreniere, I don't want to get too worried yet. I am a little, I, I'm at least a little though, getting, I'm getting skeptical and questioning what's going on there because the past few games, he's been, he's been kind of invisible. I'm not fully panicking with Lafreniere yet. I want to make that abundantly clear. I'm not saying that he's going to revert back to what he was last year in the playoffs, but definitely not the right time for him to be cooling off and looking invisible. That's for damn sure. Um, outside of that though, I mean, I thought, Matt Rempe should have got more ice time. I can tell you that right now. I liked Rempe's game, despite him not getting a lot of ice time. I had a physical presence, and it was a little contagious throughout the lineup, too. I like the way this team played at the beginning, and that's where my frustration comes in. And I think you guys know this, but I need to make it abundantly clear because everybody acts like that it's all doom and gloom here. I'm not saying this team is bad because you look at the way they opened up the first period. They're capable of it. My anger comes in because of the fact that they take their foot off the gas and they shoot themselves in the foot constantly, making things closer than it needs to be. And listen, they got the job done, but there needs to be a lot more cleaned up because I'm not exactly, I'm not convinced the Islanders, I'm not convinced on the Islanders at all. No, like this is a team that you should be manhandling. I'm sorry. It just is. Watching the way that they played, they left a lot of turnovers open. There was a lot of rebounds open. That's a team the Rangers should have annihilated today. Like, I really think they should. They could have annihilated them. But that's neither here nor there. 
The Rangers get the two points. Igor stepped up huge. So, yeah. Don't know if I have much else to talk about with this game. Uh, I didn't like how Kreider fell in overtime there. I didn't like one of the rush chances, too, where he just fires a weak shot. Not that he had a terrible game, but it's still just annoying to watch some of it. Rosovic still underwhelming. Um in terms of the fourth line, VC and Goudreau. I mean, Goudreau had the dump penalty. VC, eh. Third line, liked, I like their game every now and then, but I'd like for them to start scoring. And if Phil Pedal is going to return to this lineup, I think Phil Pedal should slot on the third line, honestly. And I would be fine with Wenberg slotting down that fourth line because Goudreau should not be playing center regardless. Every time he plays center like we saw today, it just does not go well. I would be content if they wanted to go with Wenberg, Goudreau, VC as the fourth line. Granted, I'd rather it be Rempe, uh, Wenberg, VC, or something like that. And then you put Hedl on that third line to center there because I think they'll start to add some offense to their game. And on top of the fact that they could play a solid two-way game, I just like the idea of putting Phil Hedl there potentially. And I know that people want him on the first line right wing, but Meek and Kreider got to do this themselves at some point. So... I don't know. I'd be content if they wanted to go with that, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. That's a conversation for if Phil Pedal does come back. But that's really all I got. Leave a like if you haven't. Subscribe, and I will get to your guys' post-game comments here. Get to the comments here on the post-game and see what you guys have to say. So let's go to the comments. Brad and Igor bailed us out. Yep. Wasn't pretty at all. Igor Vez, uh, playing at a Vesna level. Panarin came through and showed why he should win the heart and have MVP chance at the Garden, which it's ridiculous that he does not get MVP chance at the Garden. You're damn right. If we could do it for Brunson as Nick fans, I'm not saying everybody here is a Knicks fan, but us Nick fans do it. And even though we know Brunson's not going to win, we do it. Just do it. Why not? Why does it hurt to give the guys a bit of support? Bought the Cardiac shirt. Love to hear that, Steven. Yeah, not a uh, not a good defensive effort at all. Still very concerned going into the playoffs. We look better shorthanded than at 5v5. Igor won't be able to bail us out every game. Josh, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm happy they won the game, but yeah. They definitely need to step up their game at 5v5. There's no way around it. I have a migraine, hell of a game. Hashtag cardiac kids. Hashtag cardiac rangers. For once, can they dominate a team like the Islanders instead of giving me cardiac arrest? Nope. Because that's why we have cardiac ranger shirts. We wouldn't have it without these type of games. It just wouldn't be a thing. I I don't know if I agree with this. I, I'm not on board with calling Mika dog shit today. I actually thought Mika played a solid game. I was fine with Mika's game, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not liking how undisciplined Kaka has looked lately. He's been taking a lot of bad penalties. That needs to change, too. Yeah, Jason, I agree with you on that. Uh, they need to... And I'm at the point where all I could do is sit here and instead of complaining about it, all I could do is sit here and hope that there is a change to that. But we got, like, I, I don't know what else you could do, but just hope. But I don't know. Get the like button up for the channel. I agree with that. Yeah, Igor was the best player. I didn't like Lindgren's game either. Fox, I thought was bad too. There's a lot of times where he was stepping up poorly. Um, he had a couple shifts too where he was just gifting the puck away. Did not love Fox's game today. Not going to lie. 
Jason, I was right there with you. But I will be going to a couple playoff games. I already got tickets. I'm I'm pretty much committed. I don't know if we need more of me. More of me might be a bad thing. Listen, I, I do like to think highly of myself, but I'm not. I don't think highly of myself personally. But all I know is that I do appreciate anyone that does feel that way and does like the channel. I appreciate every single one of you that do support me. I think a lot of people, though, would agree, including myself, that more of me would be a bad thing. Not confident in this team. Look way better than the last two, but Panarin can't be the savior every game. Meek and Kreider got to figure it out. Or done first or second round. That I do agree with. Thousand percent agree. Like there's there's nothing to disagree with on that. Jones needs to play for Goss, uh, but that's Mike Tomlin AB, sadly, yeah. Well, Fox, my biggest issue with him is the fact that he allows the offensive player to gain puck possession instead of going in and playing the puck afraid to get hit. Not good for a D-man, in my opinion. I agree with that, hockey dad. Like, it's noticeable. It's definitely noticeable. Yeah, I didn't like VC's game either. My only counter to this argument, Josh, is that Maybe it's a good thing he a fresh body when everybody else is banged up right now. So, and yeah, no problem. If anybody ever wants to DM me, the best way is Instagram because Twitter, my DMs are mostly flooded, especially by bots and all this other crap. Instagram is the way if you do ever want to reach out and message me. Recommend that. Go to the Ranger Central Instagram page. I don't know the exact ad. I should... I should know the exact ad off the top of my head, though. That's a bad thing. Yeah, Ranger Central underscore. If you want to go ahead and follow, message me there. That's the way to do it. And yeah, Gus is Laviolette's guy. I know. Like, I don't think that. I know there's not going to be a change, so I'm basically screaming to avoid her. Asking for a change there, but yes, they do control their own destiny. If the Rangers beat Ottawa, they win the division. That, that's all they got to do. It's all they have to do is beat the piss poor Ottawa Senators. And somehow it's going to be more complicated than we want it to be, right? This, again, cardiac Rangers, which I am curious about. So they went out 109, 111, 13, 15. So if Boston wins out their games, though, they would win the Eastern Conference. But if not, the Rangers would win the East. So let's see, what does Boston's schedule look like? They got Pittsburgh. What, or no, they have three games left, actually. No. I'm an idiot. I thought that, I read that wrong. I read that wrong. All right, so they win... Tuesday, they win the East, right? Because 109, 111, one, yeah. Yeah, all right. Rangers win on, one game to win the East. You have, you just got to win one game. That's all. Should be easy, right? Should be. Is it the President's Trophy, too? Because I think da could Dallas beat them out for the President's Trophy. No, yeah. That's it. I cannot do math. Now you see why I'm just an idiot on YouTube. I can't. Math? No. Absolutely not. Yes, big game for the Knicks tomorrow, too. I am all bought in on the damn Knicks. Sub to my Knicks channel. Knicks Central. Sub to my Mets channel. Mets Central. Enjoy the content there. Enjoy If you enjoy me, I don't know how you do, but if you do enjoy me, sub to my other channels. Enjoy more of me. Pause. Yeah, this team along the boards definitely needs to be better in terms of their uh, the battles there. They got to start winning more board battles. Like, on one of the goals, you have both defensemen by the net and they don't win a board battle.
I don't know. If Phil Hudo's ready, put him back in the lineup. Why not? Kako has six assists in 60 games. Sit this guy. Steven continues to be out on Kako, which I I have not liked his play lately either. Like I said, I don't like the penalties he's taken. I agree that Rampy should play. All right. I'm going to fire up a poll right now. If I can. Can I fire up a poll? Where's a poll? Start a poll. There you go. Who should... It's my keyboard dying. My keyboard's dying. All right. Not starting up a poll. All right. I'm going to ask in the chat instead, since my keyboard is dying. Wireless keyboard problems. I know. I'm going to ask, and you guys give your answer in the chat. Rempy or Brodzinski? Because we're going to keep it realistic of who would actually play, potentially. Are you guys team playing Rempy or team playing Brodzinski? Because you're scared of Rempy taking a five-minute major, and hurrying this team. Could my camera focus again, please? Are you guys scared of Rempy being a detriment? Focus, please, focus. All right, my camera's just not going to focus. Maybe if I move closer or not. All right, there you go. Team Rempy or Team Brodzinski? Let me know. Yeah, they're too much perimeter play today. I agree with that. Who are the Rangers most likely play as the first seed? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, man. Like, it really depends what Pittsburgh does here down the stretch. It could be the Islanders. If Pittsburgh chokes like last year, could be Washington. Could be Pittsburgh themselves. Could be Detroit. I got no clue. Philly maybe even sneaks in, which... Um, please. No. <laughs> Please now. Garm will be alive and well between the Knicks and the Rangers. Yep. Rempy, Rempy. We got pretty much all Rempy. Any Brodzinski. Johnny B from Steven. Johnny. A couple people saying Johnny. Igor stole the win. I agree with that. Johnny B produced more. Like, here's the thing. I could see the argument for both sides. I personally am Team Rempy because of the fact that I feel like he's proving even that he like he could play the sport. I But I do get the argument. I 1,000% get the argument that he might take a dumb penalty and it's going to put this team behind the eight ball and they, it might kill them in the playoffs, especially if a team you know gets a five-minute power play. And that could be a free win right there. So I get that argument. But then there's the other side where Johnny Brodzinski, there are nights he looks invisible. And then there's nights he looks like a really good player. So Paul Rempe or Kaka. Kaka won't be sitting. Yeah, I'm confident in Rempy playing the game the right way. And that's the real issue. Is like, Lavillette, it feels like, doesn't have faith in giving Rempy a long leash with the minutes. Like, he only got five, five, six minutes today. He's not getting the leash. Like, it's going to be Brodzinski, though. It's probably going to be, unless they need a spark. I agree, but it's not going to happen at this juncture. We're at game 81. It... It's not going to happen at this rate. Take my chances on Rempy. I agree. I'm worried that all season they have a difficult time clearing, uh, clearing simple plays out of the zone, which costs them constantly. That's been my biggest complaint with this team, Anthony. And that's what I've been saying is the team, the only people getting in getting in this team's way is themselves like that's the only team getting in their way themselves I truly believe that if they clean up and play the way they did in October and November I think that this team could be 
one of the favorites in the East. The problem is there's more of a sample that it's not going to be that way than the other way around. Agree with that, Lou, but you also do run the risk where, you know, this team just doesn't have an edge to them because Rempy's not playing. That glove save on Barzell has to be the save of the year. I haven't seen anything come close. Hopefully this is the way Igor will be playing in the playoffs. He totally stole that, uh, stole this one. I agree, Dominic, and this is at least a good sign is that Igor looks like is rolling into the playoffs on fire right now, which that would be huge for this team. That would be very huge for this team. So, most compact wins in franchise history for the Rangers, 28. <laughs> Jeez. Cardiac Rangers for a reason, baby. One appropriate time for the shirts to be made. By the way, chat, let me know if you want me to do call-ins for this one. But I agree with the Igor thing that that could be save of the year. That could arguably be it, be the save of the year. Not concerned with matchups. You could throw all eight teams in a hat. Steven, I agree. When is Heedle coming back? We have no clue yet. As of right now, there's no information on that. And it's still a matter, it's honestly a matter of if still, not even when, like, He might not. Nick, listen, lineup decisions are not every coach does this with the lineup. You're not going to find a single coach out there that gives a lineup that you like night in and night out. But I do agree that the stubbornness is annoying. Like, I'm not going to disagree with that. Earliest round one, he can't play now. Well, yeah, that's also true with Phil Pedal. He can't play until the playoffs. That's the earliest. But I don't think he comes back unless his team's down in the first round or until round one's over and it's time for the second round, which my camera cannot focus today at all for some reason. All right. Camera's not going to focus today. That's great. I got to change the lighting a bit. Let's see if I could fix this. No, I can't. All right. Great. Rosvik has to be better. I agree with that. Rosovic has not been good. Needs to be better. Needs to step up. Needs to wake up. Sorry, I'm also like partially glued to the Mets right now. Do the Rangers hold the tiebreaker between themselves and the Canes? No. I think Carol, because Carolina, if there is a tiebreaker, that is right now they do. But if Carolina wins out and the Rangers lose in overtime, then Carolina has the tiebreaker. Unless Carolina wins all their games in overtime, I believe. But that would be very unlikely. I agree with that, Ben. Late round one or late round two. All right, I'm going to keep this short, though. I do apologize because it is an afternoon stream and I am going to be watching the Mets a bit. Thank you guys so much, though, for tuning in and watching. I appreciate all of you. Leave a like if you enjoyed the stream. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Ranger fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live on the channel next. And I'll see you guys in the next one.